Well, good evening. This is Bishop Spears again, and I want to welcome you to First St. John Cathedral. What a real blessing it is to have you to share with us tonight. Um, I'm just really excited about uh, this word tonight. I'm really praying even now that God will grant patience in my teaching. I'm so excited about the word that I want to make sure that we get to the truth and that the word of God blesses you in such an amazing way. So let's have a word of prayer and uh, we'll get started. Father in heaven, how we bless you and praise you, God, for uh, this time that you've given us to share your word. I pray and I ask, O oh Lord, for your fresh anointing. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will empower me and enable me uh, to teach this word and cause people uh, in the body of Christ to grow spiritually. I pray that you will clear up any area that we may have challenge with. We pray ask, asking that you, God, will clear the runway and that you will grant great success. Bless every person that's connected tonight. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, listen, I want to thank you again. As I said, what a real blessing it is to have you to share with us. Um, it is always such a blessing on both Monday night and Wednesday night. As a matter of fact, uh, as, as you've been following us, we've been doing something a little different. So on Monday, I normally preach, uh, teach from the text that I preach from on Monday. Uh, the word of God was just so good on Monday that I'm going to labor in the same vineyard again tonight out of Hebrews. That's just so much word that I want to release. And I pray that you're being blessed by it. Uh, before we close out tonight, I'm going to share some great and uh, uh, exciting information with you. I think that you will be blessed by as well. Go ahead and tag and share and encourage others to come on board and share with us. So turn with me again, if you will, to Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, tonight I am I'm picking up verse 7. Uh, verse 7, the Bible says, uh, By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward uh, to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Finally, and by faith, even Sarah who was uh, past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had promised, who had made the promise. And so from this one man and he as good as dead came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashores. Amen and amen. I want to really dig in tonight. And as a matter of fact, again, we're looking at Hebrews chapter 11. I opened on Monday night really by sharing with you that we are in a place or a season where God is saying to us that we've been called to persevere, uh, but to persevere in our faith. Uh, that that word persevere has to do with we we've been called to tolerate <laughs> we've been called to endure 
uh, to do our very level best to hold on to what we have. And sometimes uh, when you look at the word persevere, it has to do with what we've got to go through in order to maintain our standard in terms of the word of God, or hold on to the promises that God has given us. So he says we are called to persevere. Uh, but then secondly, I shared with you because uh, we've been talking about this month, this month in October. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've been talking about how faith has to be in action. And uh, it says faith has to be moving in action means that it's not standing still. It is active and it's moving in a direction. And so I want to encourage you tonight because I really believe that if you and I become stronger faith people, in other words, we build such a, a, a power on the inside uh, that we, we have strong faith. We have faith about uh, those things that seem to be impossible God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything we could ever imagine. And so when you look primarily, particularly at verse seven, the Bible says, by faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith, that God, because of Noah's uh, obedience, because of Noah's responsibility uh, of following God's lead or God's instruction, uh, began to build the ark uh, based upon what God said. And I think that you will remember uh, that we live in what the Bible calls a speaking society. And because we live in a speaking society, God is saying to us as believers, we have to practice speaking word in terms of truth uh, from a religious perspective, from a spiritual perspective, but based upon our conviction because we believe the word of God. And I want to begin tonight or continue tonight to look at passages of scripture, which means that I want to unfold uh, the passages that are before us. But I want to also begin to develop other passages because with every effort, I'm trying to make sure uh, that that we are growing in our faith, but we need our faith to work for us. Uh, one of the last things I shared with you on Monday is that God is expecting you and I to be kingdom people, which means as a kingdom man, as a kingdom woman, and as we develop kingdom children, kingdom minded in our operation, that kingdom becomes a lifestyle. And the, to a large degree, as it relates to kingdom, as we talk about faith, it really says that we are so convinced uh, that our God is absolutely able to do those things that would be impossible with uh, human beings. That's the reason why the Bible says, lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. And so the Bible says that literally Noah went to work building an ark uh, primarily because God said so. Uh, but when you read the text, he does so because he also wants to save his family. And I think it's important because there's a lot of language today uh, as it relates to the condition of the family, uh, particularly during this time of the pandemic, that we are that families, if they're not careful, families are crumbling and families <clears throat> are literally falling apart. And so I want to encourage you because 
You've got to determine that your family matters. Uh, we have conversation. That means then you got to determine that marriage matters. You got to determine that being a parent, it matters in terms of what you seed or you sow into the life of your children, you know, as we've talked about seed, seeding and sowing, we talk about what we release into their life, what we speak into them. And so I believe that as a parent, you and I are responsible for speaking the word of God so that we lift their composure, so that we lift their countenance. We do everything within our power so that our children are convinced that God is on their side. I never thought that we would live in a place or time <clears throat> where people would literally doubt the power and existence of God. And it says that we're dealing with some things today, particularly in uh, families where people are very, very educated in uh, places where people have great possessions, uh, that their faith is challenged, particularly as it relates to raising, or rearing, or growing, developing their children. We've become, uh, we've given so much attention uh, to our worldly goods that we have not invested word into the life of the children. And I bring that up because I'm discovering young people that I have conversation with who are still doubting whether or not God exists and doubt whether or not the word of God is true. The Bible says that the reason Noah by faith built the ark, one, was because God said so. But then secondly, the Bible says he in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping uh, with faith. That, so that, that if we're going to sustain family, if we're going to do everything we can as a glue to hold our families together. Uh, child of God, we've got to begin to release faith in the ears of our children. We got to release faith so that in their eyes, they're able to see what what this idea of now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen what it really looks like, because we've got to begin to move them into a place where they, too, are also trusting God to do some supernatural things. One of the things I've discovered, even as a father, <clears throat> even as both Kenneth and Kyle, who are sons, uh, journey in terms of moving in the direction of what their desires are as it relates for a working career, as they have uh, and are moving toward a more uh, in terms of academically preparing, I I'm having to I'm watching them grow. But there are times when I have to seed into their faith uh, because they have to be able to determine that God is able to make the difference, even if it looks like it's something that dad or that mom can't do. And I want to encourage you because you ought to love your children enough. You ought to love your family enough uh, to leave them as an inheritance uh, money, leave them as an inheritance land, leave them as an inheritance property in terms of material goods. But can I share with you tonight that the best inheritance that you can provide for your child, for your children, for your grandchildren is the word of God and a faith that they can attach themselves to so that if you and I are no longer here, they still have God. They still have the Lord Jesus. They still have the Holy Spirit and they still have the word of God. The Bible says Noah made a choice and a decision to obey God, to build the ark, which meant that he had to be productive 
in the process of building an ark, but he made a choice to do so because he loved his family and by faith he wanted to save his family. In keeping with that, the next line of verse, and I want I want you to follow me tonight because the Bible says by faith, Abraham, when God called him to go to a place, he would later receive as his inheritance. He obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. And if we really clearly understand how faith works. Faith is not just there to produce uh, or to manifest things in terms of material goods, but it is a blind trust. <laughs> Faith is a blind trust. Say it one more time. Faith is a blind trust. It's a blind trust because we are following God even when there are not clear directions on where we're going. It just says that we move in, 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 with, in sync with God because we trust God's voice, we trust God's vision, we trust the value that God have in us as human beings, but the value that he has in us as Christian believers that that we will follow his word, that we will do what the word of God says. And the Bible says that it wasn't really clear on where Abraham was going, but he was convinced that what God said was the word of God. And so he had blind trust. He began to walk with God, going to a place that God said you will go and you will receive as an inheritance. You will live in a place that is the promised land. And the Bible says Abraham really doesn't know where he's going, but he trusts the voice of God. And I'm trying to convince you because I do want you to live well. I want you to be able to wear well, drive well. I want the blessing of God to be on your life. That means then as a believer, you're going to have to have blind trust. Somebody need to tweet that. Somebody need to send that as a word to someone who's about to give up on life, who's been thinking about quitting and who's been thinking about walking away from the church and walking away from people who love you, who pray for you. We are in a season where we've got to have blind trust. Blind trust says, I am following you on a path that's really undiscovered, but I'm discovering some things as I travel uh, because I trust the voice of God. I trust God's instructions. I trust God's direction that whatever he gives me to do through the aid of the Holy Spirit, through the reading of the word of God, sometimes through the man or woman of God who is preaching the word of God, then I'm following those directions. I'm not doing anything outside of that, but I'm doing everything inside of that because I want the blessings of God to rest on my life. I'm getting happy right now because I want the blessings of God to rest on my life. I'm talking about when the blessings of God rest on your life because of your blind trust in a holy God God will begin to do some stuff for you. You didn't even pray about God will begin to open up some doors for you. You didn't even ask him for. But because of your blind trust, God determines to do something on your behalf to bless you in a way that is unimaginable. Uh, that was outside of your sight in terms of vision. It was outside of your hearing in terms of what you were able to detect because of sound. God says, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless you in a way so that you know that it was nobody but God. You can't give any glory to anybody else. You've got to give it to God. As a matter of fact, even while I'm talking to you, I'm praying because I'm praising God uh, because he will do 
some stuff in your life you didn't prepare for. And Abraham is in a space and the Bible says God leads, leads him as a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents and as did Isaac and Jacob uh, who were heirs with him of the same promise for he was looking forward to the city with the foundations whose maker or architect or builder is God. And so when you operate like that, all I'm really trying to suggest is that that we begin to move into a place. We are preserving our faith. We are holding on to our faith during this time of pandemic. But our faith is in action so that God is moving us in a place uh, during a place in time. What it really says is that God has the ability and the capacity to make stuff happen, even when the world seems to be standing still. Man, I'm preaching tonight. <laughs> because when your world, that's what is really powerful, when it looks like your world is standing still. When I say your world, see, sometimes we get caught up in just what the world what the world is experiencing. We are experiencing now this COVID-19. We're experiencing now in terms of uh, the political process. Uh, They're even talking about these dangerous wasps or bees that have come in uh, that are deadly, uh, pestilence that are in the airways. We're talking about all of these things. And so when I began today, as a matter of fact, the driving force for my teaching tonight has much to do with the fact I woke up this morning and uh, I was watching Channel 8 News. And as they talked about, they did a survey and they talked about, are these times causing you to have anxiety or uh, where we are? And they said, to a large degree, the, the numbers began to move from 77% uh, to 20% or 23% in terms of people who voted yes. Uh, politics has me anxious. I'm in a place of anxiety because of my personal problems. I'm in a place of anxiety because of what's happening in the world, what's happening in the world at large. But what the survey didn't ask, because it was centered upon what's going on in the world at large. But you and I have a personal world. We've got some things that are happening that are occurring in our own life. And God is saying, I want to ease the anxiety. I want to move you away from fear I want to take away worry, he says, if you can begin to trust me blindly. In other words, I'm following God with blind trust. It means that I have blinders on my eyes, but I'm trusting God. You remember the Bible says this word about the man who was born blind and he's sitting by the side of the road. And the Bible says he gets word uh, that Jesus is coming by somewhere or another. He has heard about Jesus's ability to heal. And the Bible gives this word that the only way that he's able to detect that Jesus is near is because he's able to distinguish his voice. And I'm saying to you in this season that if all we have is the ability to distinguish the voice of God, which means we can't lay our eyes on him. We hear him because of people like myself, as men and women of God are teaching the word of God. We hear him because uh, like David, David said this word. He says, I had almost lost my footing. I had well nigh become a place of slipping and falling until I saw the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so I'm saying to you, what we have is a God who's gracious and a God who is caring and a God who is loving. And what he does is he sometimes uh, releases a word that helps us to understand he has not forgotten about us. 
He knows where we are. He knows what we're dealing with. So he releases a word that comforts us and strengthens us so that even if I can't see him, I can detect his voice. His voice never changes. We are plagued today with numerous of voices that are speaking, that are trying to dictate our life. And yet God is saying, my sheep know my voice. <laughs> Hallelujah. My sheep know my voice. And I'm saying to you today, child of God, that you've got to be able to distinguish the voice of God. And so I hear you saying, how will I know? How do I know the voice of God? It is the voice that has been speaking life to you since you were a child. As a matter of fact, what I know about God is that God's tender voice will begin to be released in your ears and that God will begin to speak to you. Uh, there's a word of that will cause us to be conscious or consciously aware that 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 someone is near us, someone who's around us that loves us and cares for us. It's not just a person. It's not just something. It's not it. It is someone like God who provides a way so that we can distinguish his voice, his prompting, his clear direction. And the Bible says not just Noah, not just Enoch, but even Abraham followed God, not really knowing where he was going. And so that word is powerful. Bible goes on to say uh, that uh, and by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was uh, enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who who had made the promise. So when I started praying about this text and I'm I'm real sensitive to this area, I often often pray whenever there is a place when God is leading me uh, to deal with uh, a text, particularly around uh, this area about uh, childbearing and and women who have whatever difficulty in terms of bearing. I'm always real careful. You notice my voice just changed because I'm really sensitive in this area. I never, ever want to uh, build a message that's going to injure anybody. Uh, everything that I'm saying, I want with every effort to build you up or to increase. The value of what Sarah heard was that she heard the voice of God. The text says she considered him faithful. She never looked at the condition of her body. She never looked at the circumstances that she was dealing with, particularly as a woman. What she did was she placed value in him who's faithful. And I want to encourage you because that's a word that God is saying, not just to females. That's a word that God is saying to men that we've got to consider him who's faithful. That if we can lock in on our blind trust in terms of following God, his voice and his clear directions, we've got to consider him who's faithful. I keep saying it because I want you to get that down in your eardrums. I want you to get that word in your mind to be clear. And I want you to get that word to begin to manifest in your belly that you got to consider him to be faithful. You got to consider God to be faithful and that you believe in the promise that God has made. Because the truth of the matter is it may not be just a, a female or an individual who is struggling with childbirth. What, what it really says is that if you consider him who's faithful, him who is faithful can help you with, with uh, addictions. Him, him who is faithful in terms of God can help you with uh, mental struggles. Him who is faithful, God, if you believe, Believe in what he says. The promises of God 
God can do some things in your life that can completely change your direction and move you into a spot of place. If you believe that that he, God, is faithful. And sometimes you got to hold on to the promise. You remember when we were children, some of you remember this, uh, particularly if you've grown up in church, they used to tell us about uh, uh, that if you at the end of the road and you have a rope in your hand, tie a knot in the rope and hold on. And God is saying that today in this season that we've got to believe that he, God, who is faithful and whatever promise he has made, God is able to cause it to come into manifestation. You got to believe God that he's faithful, that he's able to do. There it is. Exceedingly abundantly beyond anything you could ever imagine. The Bible says if you believe that he is faithful, God, because he is faithful, bills can be paid. If he is faithful, he can provide a protection around your children. If he who is faithful and he is, he can provide protection around you. As a matter of fact, that's some stuff that I'm believing God for right now. Not just for you, but some stuff that I need God to do in my own personal life. And the only reason that I can keep on going is because I believe that he, God, is faithful to the promises that he has made. Let me just move. With, in fact, go back with me, if you will, to Luke. Uh, man, it's just so many different uh, uh, awesome pieces in the word of God, particularly uh, as it relates to uh, Luke. Uh, I mean, it's just powerful, powerful what what the Lord can do. As a matter of fact, uh, Luke chapter 17. And uh, I want to read for our hearing verse number five. Uh, Luke chapter 17, verse five, the Bible says the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. <laughs> because what God is looking for in this season is that he needs he needs people of faith. And so watch this. If 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 there is a struggle, if there is a struggle with what I'm saying about God and what I'm saying God is able to do, then your prayer or your prayer request is that God will increase your faith. You know, there has to be a place of time when you begin to say, God, I hear the word of God, but I don't have that level of faith. And I'm praying right now that you will increase my faith. The Bible says that the, that the apostle said to him, Lord, increase my faith. Secondly, I want to encourage you. Uh, chapter 18, verse 8 is powerful. Uh, the Bible says, I tell you, he will see that, uh, that they get their justice and quickly. However, when the son of man comes, will he find faith on the earth? And so I'm really trying to encourage you because I believe that what God wants, he wants the child of God, the children of God, those of us that are preserving our faith, that are walk, walking in action in terms of our faith. He needs our faith to increase but when he returns, he's coming after a people of faith. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be left uh, without a witness that my faith does not work because I believe that my faith works. And the Bible says that it's real important to God uh, that that the children of God believe uh, that faith does exist. As a matter of fact, you know, when you look at uh, 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 Act, uh, Luke chapter nine, uh, verse number 37, I'm moving tonight. You got to follow me. Luke chapter nine, verse 37. And so the Bible says the next day when they came down from the mountain, a large crowd met him. A man in the crowd called out, teacher, I beg you to look at my son, for he is my only child. A spirit seizes him and he suddenly screams. It throws him into convulsion so that he foams at the mouth. It scarcely ever leaves him and is destroying him. I beg your disciples to drive it out, but they could not. 
Jesus then says, you unbelieving and perverse generation. Uh, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you and put up with you? Bring your son here. The Bible says in verse 42, even while the boy was coming, the demon threw him to the ground uh, in convulsion. But Jesus rebuked the impure spirit, healed the boy and gave him back to his father. And they were all amazed at the greatness of God. Here's what I believe. And this is a great word. Maybe your child, maybe your children are not dealing with a demonic spirit, but maybe they're dealing with some kind of spirit that causes them to be disobedient. Maybe you're dealing with not just your children, but a grandchild uh, that you're struggling with in terms of getting them to be obedient. My mama used to say, mind, your Lord have mercy. You know, they they just won't mind. And, and you know, I, to be real honest, I never, ever wanted Doris Faye Robinson Spears to think that I was not mining. Lord have mercy. Yeah, her, her wrath was fierce. <laughs> Glory to God. And so I want in this season, because I believe that God has the power to rescue your child. He has the power to rescue your children. God has the power to lay hold on your grandchildren. God has the power to make a difference in the life of not just your children. He has a power to lay hold on your neighbor, your neighbor's child. God can make a difference in their life. And so we've got to believe that God is able, whether it's demon possession or some addiction. I mean, man, let me just tell you, young people are drinking and smoking weed and drugs like crazy. And and we've got to pray for God to move that spirit because that addiction is connected to a taste, an appetite that keeps drawing them back. What we need is for God to replace that appetite for that stuff, for an appetite for the word of God. We need God to replace it. And so you got to begin to pray. And let me just encourage you, because maybe you said, well, my children are too young for that. They are too young for that, but it, you, they're not too young for you to pray for a hedge to be placed around them so that they never have to deal with that. You got to begin to pray. You got to put forward prayers. Remember on Monday I shared with you that you got to know how to bring the future to the present. You got to believe that God has the capacity to bring what is unseen to make it visible which means that you got to spend some time and you can laugh at these things if you want. You can make light of them if you want. But the day will come when every parent will have to deal with some issue that you would rather that your child or children or grandchildren never, ever participated in or never had to deal with. But the truth is, is that if we don't get the word of God down on the inside of them, influencing their life right now. They're going to come up against something that's going to be more powerful than them. And so what you want is that word of God to be on the inside of them, to sustain them for those times when friends and influencers come along and try to make a difference in their life. <clears throat> We don't ever want them to move off the path or move into a place that is opposite what we desire in terms of their life or their lifestyle or what they are accomplishing in life. We don't want that. But those are areas that children sometimes face. And if we don't put that word in them deep enough, <clears throat> if we don't do some crazy stuff in terms of praying for them, putting our hands on them, anointing them with oil, and putting our hands on them. I'm not talking about, <coughs> I'm not talking about spanking them. I'm not talking about just the belt. I'm talking about putting your hands on them with that oil and praying over them from that childhood to adulthood. We got to do what we got to do because I believe that we're living in a place and yes, the enemy is after everybody. Don't play the enemy after you. The Bible says it best. Satan desires to sift you as wheat, but God says, I've been praying for you. And it's not just your pastor praying for you. 
We have the uh, Lord Jesus, our Savior, who intercedes on our behalf. And so we've got to make sure, according to the word of God, as a matter of fact, uh, Luke chapter 22, the Bible says, uh, I confer on you a kingdom just as my father conferred one on me so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail and when you have turned back, strengthen your brethren. He says, uh, because there's a place that is a turnaround for every individual. We all need a spot of place where we need God to turn our lives around. And can I encourage you by sharing that there will come a place in time in all of our lives when we'll have to make a U-turn. You'll have to exit off the road because you will have gone past your exit. You'll have to go down a little bit further, exit off the road and make a U-turn to get back to the place that God has predestined for you. So I'm encouraging you because I believe that God wants us, if we're going to operate with faith, we've got to become the present day, present day, this day, this time. We've got to become the Abel's. We have to become the Noah's. We have to become the Abraham's. We've got to become the Sarah's. We've got to become the people that God is using to do supernatural stuff in this place and time. And we've got to live such remarkable lives that a faith that God is able to trust us because we blindly trust him uh, to follow his word and to follow his precepts and examples. Let me transition. I think it's a good place right here to insert with you. I started the other day uh, praying because I wanted to know uh, how do we make a greater connection? How do we really make a greater connection with the world and with this present day society? I've been praying that I want since we're in this spot, we have to be creative in terms of our approach to sharing the word of God. Uh, many churches and ministries have not gone back uh, to in-person worship, although there are so many voices that are pushing and asking when will we go back. And we want to operate within the will of God. The other day, as a matter of fact, Monday after I finished uh, doing the Bible time, I just had a time just uh, what I call my cool down period. You know, sometimes people think that when you finish preaching, it's all over. But every preacher needs a cool down period uh, because the moment you finish preaching or teaching or sharing, you're still mentally, you're still emotionally and you're still spiritually at a high place. As a matter of fact, let me encourage you. It takes so much time to get your mind and heart ready to teach the word or handle the word of God or to even do the things of God. Uh, this is not just a byproduct. You know, you just pass by, do it. No, there's a preparation time. And so because that we are so ingrained in terms of preparing both to preach and to teach the word, it becomes difficult to just turn that off. When you get through the, the teaching uh, may be over, the benediction may have been given, uh, but spiritually your motors are still turning. You're still operating at the height. And so it's difficult to to just shut it down. So I'm in that place of the cool down and I'm talking to God in prayer because I want to make sure that we are able to reach more of you in terms of people who chime in or who connect with us. And the Holy Spirit began to talk to me. The Holy Spirit said these words, he said the place and time will come where you have to begin to use the modern day examples of people who have had encounters with God, individuals that have had amazing faith 
and God has done some great exhorts in their life that they started out with bare minimum and yet God, because of their faith, excelled them higher to stages and elevations uh, in life because of their faithful journey. And the Lord said to me, and we're going to begin to move in that direction, that take that creative approach uh, that the team uh, staff and the media team uh, did with you during the time of the pastoral celebration and began to bring people up close and personal in terms of interviewing and sharing with individuals who have some amazing stories. And so I want to encourage you because there are some of you who are watching tonight, some of you that God has done some exceptional things in your life. And there are people really who will be strengthened because of your story. Now, listen, I'm not talking about just bringing you on and talking, spending time with me in this studio uh, format to just testify. We need to hear your story of what God has done in your life. And so I want to begin to create a pathway so that we will begin over the end of this week, going into next week, and potentially next Wednesday, I'll have a special guest on that we'll get up and close and personal with who will share with us uh, how they got to where they are, what God did, what the Lord said, what God said to present day Abraham or present day Sarah, what God said to Noah, to the present day Noah are uh, the present day Abel who worshiped different, Enoch who walks different, uh, uh, those individuals who have done great extorts in terms of what God has done in their life. I believe that it's going to be a blessing to the body of Christ. God has already assured me that there are some present day people that he has used and he has spoken to. Some of them have done well academically. Some of them have made amazing choices financially. Some of them have done some great things in terms of God healing their bodies. I mean, they had perhaps the worst situation going on, but they gave their heart to God. They began to be clear and attentive to what God was saying. And the Lord began to take them on a journey and they are who they are now. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a little tag that people are sharing now. We are who we are. <laughs> We are who we are when God has full access over our life. And I believe that God is going to use this, this method, this format to bring people closer to God. Because if you can hear of a, a seven or eight year old or 12 year old, 15 year old, 20 year old, 30 year old, 40 year old, 60, 70 year old person talk about what God did. It's going to bless your heart and it's going to create the dynamics so that you begin also to move in the direction of God, that God is increasing your faith. You got to believe that I'm hearing from God and God is doing some amazing things. And so I'll share with you. Look forward to a special guest that will be with us on next Wednesday and look forward to the things that God is about to do. I believe it as I prepare to close. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for us. And so I want to encourage you. God bless you and keep you. Let me encourage you also. I think that finally there ought to be a place in time in midweek worship. As a matter of fact, as we have functioned as a church and a ministry, uh, we've done Bible study on Monday, Bible study on Wednesday. And in those varied services, we had opportunities to give. And I want to begin to challenge you and encourage you uh, that although we are not in person worshiping, we are still in the presence of the Lord. And it does require giving in order to stay afloat and to function. And we're excited about what God is doing, what God has done, particularly with just our giving on Sundays. But I want to begin to encourage you 
as if we were in person worship that you will begin to sow or to seed or to give into this ministry. Yes, on Mondays, on Wednesdays, on times that we come before you because it takes resources to function and operate. I will encourage you. We will have special guests coming throughout this week. I'll give you more details about that. Man, God is doing some amazing things. It's so powerful that the moment I hang up the phone, the phone begins to ring again. And it's another exciting promise. And so I'll share those with you. Sometimes I'm limited, but you kind of got to figure. You kind of got your eye on this thing. You know me well enough to know that something is, is happening and it's amazing. Keep your eyes open for Friday. Oh, my God, we're going to be blessed. God bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. And I pray that God will bless us with an amazing peace. God bless you and keep you until we meet again the next time.